Hello and welcome to the Every Other Saturday podcast, our brand new episode on the YouTube channel this week, uh, where we're going to talk about last night's events, obviously at Ibrox. We needed a big performance, we got a big performance, we got the result we needed, then we're on to play PSV in the playoff round for a spot in the UEFA Champions League group stages next week. Exciting times, um, maybe a lot of people didn't expect us to actually be in this position, um, going on last week's performance, obviously in Belgium, but... As we say in the title there, we stormed our way to, to the US, UCL playoff um, as we battered uh, Union St. Gilles last night. So we'll talk about our thoughts on that. Uh, we'll talk about PSV a little bit as well, obviously the upcoming opponents, how their game against Monaco went, some of the other key players and strengths and stuff like that. So we'll talk about that. And then also finishing on the St. Johnston game, it will be played at Ibrox on Saturday in the league, which could see quite a bit of rotation after a, some hard yards were put in last night. Um, so I, I expect maybe a bit of rotation in, in that front. We'll talk about a squad selection for that. And as always, if you could like, subscribe, share for us, as always, very much appreciated. And thanks for the support on the videos on the YouTube channel for the start of the season. It's always very appreciated. So um, first going on to, obviously, the goal scorer there, Malik Tillman, but... Uh, 3-0 at home. Union St. Gioua were absolutely stunned. Uh, they said in the media, their captain said in the media that this wasn't going to affect them. They were they were going to be fine. They had the 2-0 advantage. They thought they were a good team. And technically, they were a glorified pub team when you look at it because they were absolutely ranked rotten last night. Um, mm-hmm. Failed to really do anything. It was clear what their game plan was. Frustrators, die for anything. Just take a card, take tackles, whatever. They weren't interested in playing football in that first half. And um, we s- struggled at times to break them down. As I think Ollie, uh, as we do with all teams that maybe play that kind of way, we're similarly um, a-, a Kilmarnock or such in, in Scotland uh, in that first half mm-hmm. were the Belgian outfit last night. So I, I think we-, we struggled to break them down a bit, uh, feeling out process. We had a couple of decent chances in the first half before the, the penalty, of course, but... Cholak's header, uh, I think it was actually two Cholak headers, one great save for the keeper and one just over the bar, but um, if, barring that, the team selection going into this one, we'll start on, what was your um, what was your thoughts on the team? Yeah, uh, well, on the team selection, I was a bit shocked to see Scotty Arfield start, mate, I didn't really think he'd start him in a Champions League game. Um, Cholak, I, I probably expected him to play, but in my heart, I wanted Morelos playing, starting. If he's fit to come on for a wee cameo, I think he's fit enough to to start. The back line, I wasn't really, I wasn't really bothered with. Um, you said to us when you would seen that young uh, Turkish boy looked a bit nervy, um, on occasion, um, with the game there at the weekend there. But I wasn't really just a field I was questioning personally, but I could kind of understand it maybe with the maybe the runs and maybe the the physicality brings his brings to the game. Sorry, and the intimidation as well. You seen him was at the left back he was going for and all he was giving him a wee bit of it as well, which <laughs> I liked. So I could understand it. I didn't like the idea of Tillman's out wide. Mm-hmm. Don't like the idea of him playing out wide. He needs to be in the middle. He needs to be the the main focal point for me. Um because oh we'll get into it, but what a player. No. No, I th- I think the team was kind of we knew we were going to go for it and we knew we needed an extra body in the middle of the park that wasn't going to be Kamara or Jack. A lot thought Davis, but I think maybe Arfield looking at it on paper was probably the right call because you need somebody to go in and play attacking wise I would have preferred Tillman over there and Matondo maybe out in the right personally because mm-hmm. um, I feel that Arfield uh, at this moment in his career is as an impact sub like you look at the impact he made against Livingston he's always going to come on and make that that um, that difference I just feel for the start he doesn't really do much for me uh, I've, I've went on well, the podcast a lot of times like he's, he just sort of ghosts out of games when he starts and I just I, I don't feel I don't feel he's a starter personally in my opinion No I agree mate I think he is one of those impact subs but uh, I, I I wouldn't have started him last night as I was, I was kind of wanting Davis to start but um, I Scotty Arfield obviously no. started getting the head um, I'm the same with you, mate. I think he's just a great impact sub. He's somebody you bring on. Um, if you need, obviously, you need that we go. That we, maybe a wee bit of burst of energy, a bit of um, changing the morale. Um, mm-hmm. As you've seen in the Livingston game, and he got the goal. Um, but I was kind of wanting Davis to start last night. No, I think um, I, I put Davis in the, the team 
selection for it as well. I thought playing him in the weekend, he was maybe going to going to have him in because Kamara and Jack obviously just that experience head, isn't it? He's yeah, been there and done it before in the Champions League, so yeah, and he's he's that cool head in the middle of the park. Can keep the ball, he can keep you going. And mm. at thirty, where is he? Thirty seven now. He, he looked didn't look out of place the other day, so. Aye, um, I think he'll probably start the weekend's game as a, a spoiler for as we go on, but aye, I think he's probably going to be a shoe in to get a, a start on on Saturday. But I was happy with the team, to be honest with you, as we were just touching on before we went into that. First half was obviously pretty tough to break this team down. Um, as we say, the two chances for Cholak happened, and then we got uh, the, the penalty, Bona Barisic. I think... Uh, <laughs> The, the two crosses that he had in the night were absolutely shocking, but ended up in, in our favour. I mean, I don't know what the guy's doing. He's, he's a hand, his shoulder, where his arm even is. Um, easy penalty for the referee to give, and he makes amends for that when he gave him Belgium last week, which was obviously a horrible, horrible decision. So That was my, uh, that was my first thought on that penalty. I thought, well, I mean, that's fair game. If you're going to give him the one he gave them last week, it's only fair game with this one. I overall, see you on the referee, just touching on him. What a shocking referee. I think he had no idea the, the players he had carded um, for Union St. Berlin. Um, I think he had no idea who he was carding. Because there was a boy that was on, I think he was on a yellow, and he kept making uh, the fouls. Who was mm. it on? I can't remember who it was on. But he kept making the fouls, and I keep saying to myself, come on, mate, you've got to, get, you've got to get red there. There was one or two of them that were on yellows. I thought that he should have maybe put the red up, because he was quick to do it with Sands when it wasn't a, wasn't a red. Um, it, was a, it was a world-class tackle for my boy. Obviously, we'll touch on him, but I thought the referee had a shocker last night. Aye, I, th- I think the referee was poor, and it was the same referee, I believe, that we had um, when we played Alishkett at home and Lundstrom got sent off last season. Oh, no. I, I'm sure it was the same referee, so he uh, didn't cl- cover himself goals even when he was at Ibrox that night. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, if he's not Spanish, sure, he's on the sure. take. The UEFA referees are disgusting, but honestly, all referees, majority of them are, but mm. their refereeing is even shocking, man. No, I, th- I thought the referee... I at times had a very poor game to be honest with you. As you say with the the shocker with, with Sands and, and just some decisions I think went missing. But uh, it was good to obviously get that goal. Tavernier steps up as he does in Europe at home and, and puts it in. Captain always always step up in the big pressure moments and and firing us ahead. Really good time to score as well because their game plan is totally changed going into the second half now. Like they would be happy to just sit back even more, but. Great time to score. Um, and I think looking at it on the base of things was a bit flat maybe in the first half at times where we were struggling to get forward and we're creating. The, but weren't getting the runs in the middle. After that's where I was wanting Tillman's playing. Mm-hmm. Nobody was making the runs, as I say. I thought half he was a wasted jersey in the first half. Um I think the game really changed when he came off. Yeah. I... But, um no, they were hard to break down, obviously, in the first half. And you knew what kind of game they were going to play, do you know what I mean? Yeah, this I... is all about being consistent, mate. But as you say, Daniel steps up. The legend he is. I don't think there's, there's any dispute in it, man. The guy's an absolute legend for the club. No. Um, as soon as it was a penalty, mate, I had I had all the confidence in the world. The amount of situations he found himself in last season, big pressure situations, and he put the ball in the net with penalties. It's fantastic. No, n- never in doubt, to be honest with you. Never in doubt. Gets us in 1 0. Uh, maybe a lot of people were thinking, is it time for Morelos to come on? But Gio stuck with Cholak up there. Um, it seemed to have been working okay in the first half. I mean, I would love to have seen more of Ryan Kent in the first half, but in the second half, he totally kicked on. He, t- he told somebody up him in the first couple of minutes, did you not? He put the, where was the ball? He was like, oh, nah, it was a couple he, of decent moves. but um, couple of, I liked him and Lawrence linking up together. I thought they could nah, certainly yeah. understand each other's game a bit, which I liked. Mm-hmm. There was a chance to that kid where I think it was Barisic played the ball in and he went with his foot instead of his head. If I think if he had went with one of the diving headers, mm-hmm. he could have had a goal there. But I was... We'll touch on him, mate, but I thought he had a fantastic game again, man. I don't nah, understand the, the maybe the dislike for this boy. I really do like him. Nah, I mean, he's he's working a lot harder. I, I believe last night he, he put in a, a good shift. Second half, I mean, we came out, we knew what we had to do. 45 minutes, we have to score two goals. Um, started off again really good. Uh, had had some chances and, and we're moving the ball well. We didn't give him anything, really. And then... Um, I think it was was it another Barisic cross or was it Lawrence sent a I think it was Lawrence sent a Tavani at the Arfield you think Arfield yeah. busting it with it Goalie makes a good save and then obviously Cholak is exactly where you want to be yeah. to, to nod in and, and get his second goal at Ibrox um, buzzing for him to be honest with you was, was criticised I mean won two games into the season and quite wrongly so I think because I think 
Cholak looking at him, if he's in that position, he's going to score about 20 a season for us. And uh, to be honest, I, I just I have a, a good confidence in him. Mm-hmm. Um, Gio's obviously backed him right for the start. Obviously, we've had limited options up there, but uh, for him scoring a big goal at Ibrox last night, his confidence is going to be coming on a lot. And I, I think the fans are starting to take away their, their criticisms a wee bit for him. No, no, definitely. I feel like they are. Uh, massive goal for him. Massive goal in terms of his confidence as well. Um, I just don't understand writing a player off in the first couple of games. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll give Barisic maybe some stick, but I've seen him play long enough. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. his first stick. First half, I, I thought he wasn't the best, but second half, I thought he was a hell of a lot better. But Cholak overall, mate, I, I really was impressed with his game last night. As I say, one or two, maybe decision making. Mm-hmm. He could have done better, as I say, instead of going with the foot, maybe go with a diving header there. But overall, I mean, as he says, he's a different player for Alfie. He's not going to do what Alfie does. I don't think him they can do what Alfie does for us. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited about him. Maybe, maybe get. It'll be interesting to see when all, all three of them are fit and ready to go. Um, because, that, as I say, that scrappy goal is something that my boy Kim Maldif would have scored as well. I don't no. know what Scott Arfield does with a shot. It's kind of like when I kick a ball, do you know what I mean? And you, you miss the ball completely and you just boom, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad he got it on target and, and uh, it led to the goal, thankfully. But um, at that moment, then I think Ibrox was just buzzing because I think everybody knew the, the direction it was going. We were. We were going to uh, that place we needed with the, with the three goals and um, I think I for then on we sort of went up a level. Cholak came off, Morelos, was it, or I can't remember if it was after the third goal or not, but... Morelos um, came on after that, he was raging. He was raging, Tillman scored that. I just looking at him, I'm like, my boy wanted the winner. He nah, wanted yeah, I, thought, I thought it was going to be written in the stars for him to come on again and, nah. and get the goal, but... Um, I, and then we got, got the goal, obviously, Barisic, as I say, we had a horrible cross... Don't know what the goalie's doing in Tillman. I can I, I literally nearly looked away because I thought the goalie had caught it and it was yeah. in the net. <laughs> and he, he's such a massive leap and such a big moment for him as well. Mm-hmm. Second game, uh, competitive game at Ibrox and, and scoring a massive goal at that. Uh, my, it's looking very good for Malik Tillman so far at, at Rangers, uh, especially when he moved into the middle of the park. He done a, an admirable rollout in, ah, out in did, the right hand side, just, but that's... you just want him. Want him in the middle creating stuff and he's just got everything about him to succeed here. Mm-hmm. He's got the, the physicality, the pace, the, the flair, the technique. I think he's got everything. And I'm just so glad he's he's here at we is and we've got that option to buy him because you hate getting attached to loan players and then they obviously ah, move they back. Ah, like maybe I'm a Diallo, of course. <laughs> but ah. uh, aye, Malik Tillman's filling that void pretty nicely at the moment. Great goal, buzzing for him. And f- for me, my man of the match actually looking at it was Tom Lawrence. I thought Tom Lawrence was half. unbelievable last night. He just, just shows you what he gives you in the middle of the park, man. Just always. I was a bit forward. worried. I was a bit worried in the first half. Everybody uh, went in for one or two tackles, and I thought, this is what I said to you. Well, this might be one of the games where he just gets a reckless red card. Mm-hmm. But overall, mate, sensational shift for Tom Lawrence last night. I think you, you, you couldn't go wrong if you said him or Tillman's one of the new no. as a man of the match because I thought two of them were just. Sensational on Tillman's go. I thought, mate, that was like 10 minutes, man. Of him just leaking up in the air. I was yeah. like, what's going on there? But, uh, no, don't know what their goalkeeper was doing, but thank you very much. Um, but no, overall, mate, you couldn't go wrong with saying money to the other man in the match last night. No, I, 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 Tillman gets that, that big moment, of course. And uh, he's seen how emotional he was at full time as well in his interview and stuff like that. It just shows you how how big a goal that was and how, how big a goal that was for him. Um, he couldn't looks like he couldn't believe it at full time. So buzzing for him. I'm just buzzing for the team in general because it feels like we needed we needed a big lift like that again. Uh, I mean, a lot of the performances and maybe start of the season criticisms and that players not hitting the ground running, if you say, mm. uh, were starting to come out. But I think that performance has really put us on the map again uh, for a lot of people. A lot of players showing up and turning up and showing they can do it at European level. So. Absolutely buzzing last night, um, and we then go on to play PSV. Mm. Obviously, we were waiting for that after extra time. Uh, but it was at three each, ended up Aye. PSV getting a late equaliser there. As you can see with the stats, though, 11 shots they had, and they scored three goals. Monaco had 30 shots. shots. <laughs> wow. Monaco had 30 shots. So Monaco, obviously, clearly the better side, looking at it on the... Mm. On the 90 minutes, maybe unfortunate to go out, more possession um, as well there. But, but it's PSV, football, isn't it? You, it's all about, you know what I mean, getting those those chances and putting them away about what really, in it? Mm-hmm. And Monaco look like they've, got, they've now got some good forwards, they've got a Voltman and what have you, 
Uh, Voland, uh, Ben uh, Yedder, you can see who scored there. They've just signed Malang Sar as well for Chelsea on yeah, loan. Yeah. Uh, so Monaco, decent, decent side. Um, definitely if PSV are competing with them over two legs, PSV are going to be a really good team. Rud van Nistelrooy coming in there and this season uh, looks to have went up a level. Obviously, they challenged the Ajax last season. Aye, they, aye, they battered Ajax the other, the other week, aye. And uh, we're obviously challenging up the, the league with them last season. So definitely no mugs. PSV, cracking team. Uh, just to hang everybody for Holland, to be honest with you. PSV, Ajax, Feyenoord, all really top, top clubs. Um, aye, I'm looking forward to, to meeting them next week, hopefully, hopefully on the winning side. Um, but looking at looking at their team, obviously Joey Veerman, one that will hurt the heart a bit because it was so close apparently. So close, and he's he scored back to back there with, against Monaco. Uh, Teal in the middle of the park as well, another uh, creative midfielder. Sangari as well is widely regarded as one of the the best centre defensive midfielders outside the top five leagues. Always been sort of scouted by Man United and co. So another one to watch out there. And I think maybe their star man, their captain, Cody Gakpo, who last night has just been linked with Man United, apparently. Uh, he's been linked with Leeds. He's been linked with everybody this summer. So definitely one to watch there. And you can't forget about Luke de Jong that got the winner last night. Formerly, obviously, Barcelona. I think Sevilla as well. Yeah. Uh, aye, a veteran, if you would say, the game. Yeah. Another top striker. Um and I looking at the team and just looking at the business they've done this season, uh, signing Javi Simons as well for, for PSG. They've they've done a lot PSV and definitely That's another one <laughs> again, the boys, it? Another one, I know. Uh, definitely a game we need to take um take care of at home, I would imagine, because I would I'd, I'd hate to go over over there with only maybe a no lead, maybe one goal or something. I'd love to just batter them at Ibrox like we did last night. We're obviously very capable of doing it. I don't think any team would want to come to Ibrox, to be honest with you. It's an absolute fortress in Europe, and I hope we, we keep that for for the game next Tuesday. It's going to be an exciting one. Definitely going to be an exciting one, and yet again, one that I'm sure if they'll turn up for. Um, it'll be inside the Ibrox. But as you say, Joey Veerman, there's a lot of storylines, I think, in this sort of game. For the build up, really, you look at somebody like Joey Veerman closely signing for the club. And then, obviously, you look at Giovanni as well, he's got history in that league and what have you. And so, I there's definitely a lot there. They've got a really exciting team, though. Um, as I said, I watched the highlights of them, obviously, because I thought, let's see how Calvin Bassey's done here, get a red card. But <laughs> they absolutely battered them. And as you say, they're captain, they're star man. Let's hope Man United can take him. Um, and they're, they're a weak man down because. He is a dangerous player, but I'm overall I'm just happy to be in these kind of ties again. Do you know what I mean? I don't really there's no fear playing any of these teams, especially at home. Maybe away because it's not the best away in Europe, is it really? But um at home definitely bring it on. Um I was kinda I was wanting to play Monaco Jack. I was gonna try and nip on it. Do you know what I mean? Throw myself on a plane. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Try and go to Monaco. No, but uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. I mean, these are the teams you're gonna have to play um in the Champions League, regardless. And then if you want to don't know what the, the obvious goal is, obviously, getting the group stage and then maybe for their own qualify into the Europa League or what have you. But um, overall, you're going to have to play teams like this. You can't avoid them, if you're wanting to go where you want to go on it, really. So no. hopefully we can take care of business. I, I don't know if we'll battle them, as you say, but if we're firing, we're on fit. We wouldn't put it past us. But if we can get a really positive result and then obviously go out um, to the Netherlands and get a decent result listen see if we go out there Simeone tactics was falling on the floor up oh, cramp five minutes in we're down nah, if, if the first leg um, goes to plan which I think we will we will go for it obviously at Ibrox if that goes to plan and second leg it has to be it has to be just like disgusting yeah. football like just in <laughs> just like just like uh, Gio had done last night obviously you're going to come to Ibrox and do that if we take a lead over there of course we're going to go and do that as well take our chances when we can and it's just going to be a, a, buy, a big boost, sorry, to have um, Morelos, Ryan Kent back, fit, firing. I know we rely on the two players too, so much, but the team just looks in a lot better yeah. shape when they're there. The bench last they, night looked fantastic as well for who we could call on. So mm. uh, I think uh, we're ready. We're ready to play teams like this. Um, and I, I can't wait, to be honest, next Tuesday. The whole... Champions League stuff's going to be there. The music's going to play. Yeah. The players are going to have the Champions League on the, the shot. The ball's in the middle of the pitch. It seems like it's the it's the big time again. I hope the players don't get spooked by that occasion. And I hope they uh, I hope they, they put in put in the job. But I can't wait. No, I can't wait, I don't think we'll get spooked. 
you make. Do you know what I mean? Look at the journey we've, we've been on in Europe so far. As you've seen Tavernier many times last night saying to players, keep your head. You know what I mean? Don't get hanging on it. Keep your head. And that's what we've got to do. I mean, as fans, you know what I mean? We'll probably be losing our minds to finally have that Champions League anthem playing at Ibrox, have the, the uh, Champions League stuff all on the kits and the ball there as well. Maybe no the referees. Um, could do without them, to be <laughs> fair. Honestly, I think there's some of the worst referees in the world, man. Uh, the best referee I've ever seen was at the World Cup with all the like, um, Asian referees. I thought mm-hmm. they were spot on. But um, just going back to obviously last night as well, we see some of the defensive performance. I know people will maybe jump on one or two of them. I know my boy Sands will probably get criticism, but that tackle was sensational, world-class. My boy is world-class. He's just got a couple of a wee steps in him. I'll fight MD for it. This is my guy. Same way you back Diablo. I'm backing James Sands. I'm telling you right now. Nah, yeah, paying, paying the that's money it. for Tillmans. I'd pay the money for Tillmans and Sands. Honestly, I know people go on about, he's always oh, no centre-half or whatever. I can, he's got a wee bit of mistake in him. I can understand that. But listen, you look at some of that passing from McLaughlin. That's a guy that, it's for me, as the number one this season. But I'm sure, let's see if there's still a chance. Go and buy a goalkeeper now. Mm-hmm. You've got to. Um, because he nearly gets his own man sent off. I thought Connor Goldson had a couple of slack passes in him, but that's every game with Connor. And uh, some of Cavaniers' decision making, I thought at times I said to you, makes a run um, down the wing, and then there's Tillman's on the edge instead of just passing it to him. He's in, he, he whips the ball in, and so I mean he put him under pressure as well. There was one pass he put Sanders under pressure where we just playing that long. I think the the back line for the whole season was was we speaking about just before we started recording here is like totally just disjointed the full Absolutely. full year because I mean you're looking like. Like McLaughlin's obviously been in goals, Tavernier goals have been there, but it's been either Suter or Sands, and then you've had Yilmaz coming in for Barisic, and uh, it's just not been. It's going to take some, Listen, I don't think my boy Sands will, will be number one choice for, for that much longer. Davis has got to pay. You paid that kind of money for him. He's got to start. He's got to start. Um, and same with the young boy as well. He's got to get used to the environment he's nah. in now. It's go, It's going to be a toxic environment sometimes, but it's also going to be. A buzz that you've never felt before. At I, I think so. I think Yelmaz will be all right. I think he maybe was just a bit nervous coming in. He, obviously, he's been in the country Aye, for a while. Like, for new territory. New territory. But then the fact that he's played in it be Besiktas and he's played in games against Galatasaray, like they're fiery, fiery games, and the Besiktas support obviously very, very, um, ah, very, very strong and, and stuff like that. So I think he'll be used just, to that. It'll just take a bit of time for him. Um, looking at the rest of the defense, as you say. Tavernier last night obviously had a few moments where he maybe made the wrong decision, the wrong pass. I thought that left back again was excellent. I think he's an absolutely cracking player. Uh, uh, he like couldn't get by him at times. He's just that strong. So uh, maybe a, a bit of from game, mate. Nah, he wants some game as well. I can take it. And you see, like we, we go soon as well. A couple of moments where I mean, what's he like? He's, he drives forward and then he just goes nowhere and Aye. then he loses the ball. He it's just he's where he is and then he goes, oh, what am I doing here? And then he just loses. It. It's a uh, it's a couple Bro. of moments with him. Sands obviously had a couple of moments as well where maybe it looked it looked new to him playing a centre half role. Um, mm. I mean, he, some couple of times he he got bodied and he was winning his headers and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, but there was a couple of moments where I questioned: like, Is this guy going to going to be good enough to start a centre half all season? Not sure. Uh, I, I, I like I like him as an option, of course. I like him as an option and. I think he can become a good player, as I said to you last night. Games where you've maybe made a couple of select passes, not the best game, nearly get sent off. Or games that are going to make him and build him for the future. So, um, uh, he can. He just can I don't like the bank with that tackle, one hundred percent. it's just I don't. You you were the, you're the same as me, mate. I just I don't like when we we jump on a player straight away. Do you know what I mean? You've got to give them time. It's not we're only so far into the season. I get Sanz has been here since what last January? Well, this January, isn't it? Sorry. Mm-hmm. So. Obviously, I could I can understand that, but he barely played. You know what I mean? It was even in the Aberdeen game, he got abused straight away. Barisic, I mean, Barisic in the first half and being in the stadium, he was um, he was getting a lot of people angry ah, yesterday. Was, to be honest, because because that's because, every game with Barisic. But what I can understand, right, is if a player's loan confidence, he's always going to take the safe option. See if a player's There's, always checking back and passing it in field, like. He's clearly low in confidence and he's not going to take any risks because he doesn't want the, the crowd to go on his back. I get 100% that. But I, 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 we really? just struggle down the left-hand side sometimes. No, definitely. That, as I've said to you all along, mate, that's the weakest side of your defence. 
but there was a couple of times where if you watch the game back, my boy Sands puts his head down, and I'm thinking, bro, keep that head up. You are mm-hmm. a beautiful young American boy who is going to win the World Cup. Keep your head up. When you get somebody like Tillman's there, come on, keep your head up. I just, let's give my boy some time, please. Don't just jump on him straight away. I'm backing him. I don't care what happens, I'm backing him. No, um, yeah. Same with Cholak as well. I'm backing him. I like him. I like him a lot. I think he's, he's got a lot of uh, qualities about him. It's the same with Lundstrom, mate. And I was right with him. I was proven right with Lundstrom. And, so. and you look at Lundstrom last night, see if Lundstrom wasn't there. Like, it just shows you like, how how much of a gap will be left in that middle of the park. Lundstrom, i seen the most perfect tweet ever. Lundstrom does not give a fuck about anybody bar Rangers, and that's the only people I want at the club. I only want people that are willing to actually die for the badge. Okay, and Lundstrom is a guy we've been crying out for forever. When mm. Times where we've been bullied and laughed at by, by fucking Hibs, Aberdeen, Celtic uh, games and all that, and we just had nobody in there to really fight back. Lundstrom's that guy and we just don't give a fuck about anything anymore. Lawrence mm. as well. Nah, I'm, I'm fine That's with what I like about so. I, obviously, as I say, when he first signed, I was only having a wee bit of balance there. Do you know what I mean? My lead side came out, but I like he's got that nastiness in his game. He's got, do you know what I mean? I really like that. I like he's got the nastiness there and then also the link-up play with Kent, I thought was... Nah, I thought he was absolutely that could, that could be something. That could be really something special with their, their relationship. But Tillman's, my God, play him in the middle of every game. I don't want to see him out wide. My only criticism in Matondo, bro, hit the gym. I, I, I know that's thingy for me to say, but please. Nah, he, he got out muscled quite a few times, aye. Do you know what I mean? I'm just I'm just saying, if he's got a bit more strength about him, he's getting there with that pace as well. Let's you fine. Nah, he had a couple of nice touches, and, and especially when he came on. And we'll move on to actually the St. Johnston game where we can talk about Matondo a bit more because I feel like he's going to probably start that game. But St. Johnston, the last time out, we'll all remember how unbelievably depressing it was away from home 1-0 Shocking. no subs the Worst players were dying life. on their feet Gio was just <laughs> sitting in the touchline laughing at him <laughs> but we got the victory we got the victory that night, so that's the main thing anyway but I hopefully no more of that uh, I Brox and I a game we realistically should be going on to win uh, I think our, our fixtures at the start of the season have been pretty kind to be honest Aye. three home games um, and then Hibs are to come in a couple of weeks so I uh, St Johnston St. Johnston have started actually better than I thought they would. They've got that win against that Motherwell win. the other day there. <laughs> Motherwell are in a shocking state, as, as we all know. Um, but uh, Motherwell obviously equalising in the 95th minute or something, and then St. Johnston going straight up the park and scoring yeah, again. So, uh, fair, made, fair play to Callum Davison and his squad for getting a victory. I think that was the first victory <laughs> of the season. So, um, I, it's, even no matter how bad St. Johnston are or how they've been, always a tough game and always a they're always a tough team to break down, uh, I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, so, aye, the team the team I've went with me on screen, I think he'll give McGregor a start, to be honest with you. I, I think he'll, he'll start McGregor. I think Tavenier goals and obviously keep their places. This is a perfect opportunity to give Davies and Yilmaz, mm-hmm. I think, another... Davies, his full debut if he has to start, and then Yilmaz, another start at left-back. Lindstrom, I think maybe will sit out of this one. I've got Kamara there in the minutes. I think Davies will come back in. Kent, again, to build up that fitness uh, again ahead of, obviously, the PSV game. Lawrence, I would love to see him in the middle of the park. The only reason I didn't put Tillman in, because Tillman looked like he absolutely gassed himself out last night. Obviously, no problem if it is him, but I just loved what Lawrence did, done last night. I think I would love him alongside Kent again in, in the middle of the park. Rabi Matondo, for me, in the right-hand side. Wouldn't surprise me if he went Scott right though. Um I just need a big my performance heart was in my right. mouth. <laughs> See, when I seen him warming up last night, I thought, Gio, don't you dare. Don't you dare do that. No in a Champions League game at home, mate. No, nah, no. I, no I, see, when I seen him coming out as well, I thought, nah. But <laughs> it's the fact that he maybe put on Kamara and Matondo ahead of uh, Jack and, and Wright maybe gives us a bit of a signal for the weekend of who he's going to give the minutes to. And then Morelos, hopefully that will be him back ready to start the game. Even if it only is for 60 minutes, getting 60 minutes into his legs uh, ahead of PSV next Tuesday, which I, I probably expect him to start now. Oh. Um, and then Cholak can come on uh, second half or vice versa. I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Yeah. I mean, personally, mate, I'm not playing Kamara. I'm keeping Lonnie on there. I'm playing Lundstrom and um, maybe throw Devo back in there, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe I like, I obviously the defence. I don't think McGregor, but... I wouldn't be shocked if McGregor would play really, but uh, I think he's going to show faith. He seems like a guy that shows faith in the players, even when they have a bad game, which I like. 
Um, so I'm going to stay with McLaughlin and goals. I like that back line. I think that'll probably be it. I think that is looking like a back line for the, what, the season. That will probably go on to be the man. strongest spent back line. Money. He spent big money on Davis and Yalmaz. They've got to be. Um, I, I've, I have to go think he'll, he'll play on Strum and Tillmans. Um, personally, I thought Kent looked a bit. I think he obviously mm-hmm. turned straight back in here. I thought Kent looked a bit. But the back track, listen, Ryan Kent. Ryan yeah, Kent yeah. is just, as, as we've said in that Livingston one, and... He just never, ever gives up. He just yep. always is running. And if, I mean, the times where I, I literally watched him just chase the guy and then he won the ball back and then we went and gone uh, ahead again. See yeah, that when he played through to Morelos and all? I thought, brother, chip him. Aye. He, he, he did, Kent did all the hard work. You know what I mean? All, all Morelos had to do was chip the keeper. Kent is just unbelievable. And the fact that we had him back last night, I think, is... Uh, do we win 3 now without him there? I don't know, because no. he's so no, key to Everton. I mean, there was times where... He was like, tripled up on by the team. That just shows you how much of a threat he's going to be. Um, so, I rank in. Happy to have him back. I think, he, as you say, just being back, you maybe not start him, bring him on second half, but I think it's, I expect him to start here. It's, it's a Johnston. You want to maybe keep Kent, maybe bring Kent on second half. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because you want to obviously get, keep the minutes the same with Morelos. You're definitely starting the two of them next Tuesday, two of them for me, play the full 90, but maybe just manage them in this game. No. Just to see how it goes, as I say, but I think we'll look to go and get the job done fast. I would love to, I would actually love it if we'd done that in the league game, by the way. Uh, see if we it. went out and just done the business in the first half, and then we can fanny about the second half, we can yeah. make the changes yeah. and we can do stuff like no, it would be as you say, maybe a lot of beneficial, but I honestly think Lundstrom and, and Tillmans have got to play. I, I probably play Lundstrom and once in the middle of part, Tillman's just mm-hmm. in that number 10 role, man. Yeah, well, maybe you could look at it that way as well. I always go with the 4 2 3 1 because I expect that's what she was going to go with. But right. going with the 4 3 3 last night, maybe looking more on the front foot, I would be happy to maybe just see Davis or Kamara or Lynch from or Jack just sitting and then mm-hmm. have Lawrence and Tillman. I, I, would, I wouldn't just be. Co-op. Nah, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be concerned about that. Honestly, at all, so. what, what a player he is, really, as I said. He's got both sides in him. That's what I like about Lawrence. Do you know what I mean? He has got that mean streak in him, as I say to you. He's definitely going to get a stupid a card out. He will get carded in the L for him. He'll be one of them that goes in for one of them big tackles, which I'm batting, do you know what I mean? But also just a, what a player. And I like that he always has his head up and he's always looking to have a shot or link up. Nah, he's just f- f- breaking into f- f- midfield and going forward. He's just he's that guy that's going to do it, man. I just I loved his performance last night. I thought it was just no, immaculate, to be honest with you. No bad for a guy that... I was criticising because he's watch on. We all make mistakes at the end of the day. So, no, we do um, I, that, that was a good episode. I enjoyed talking about the game last night and looking ahead to PSV and also the game at the weekend. Um, I, just buzzing. The season's back in full effect and we're playing these proper ties. So, as always, if you could like, subscribe, share about for us as well, very much appreciated. Um, Let us know your thoughts on the, the game. Always interested in hearing the your thoughts team prediction the for Tuesday. Well, sorry for St Johnston. Um, and just overall how you're feeling so far with the season, if there's anything you disagree with. It's all right, we're all, we're all here to have, have a conversation. That's what it's about. Let's not get heated. Let's have a conversation. And um, I, on this podcast, we like to be proven, proven wrong. Um, so let's hopefully we can do the business against PSV, get ourselves into the Champions League group stage. What a buzz that would be, Jack. No, let's hope so. Uh, get in the comments with your thoughts and we'll see you next week. Cheers.